Manchester City have just beaten Liverpool 3-2 in an exhilarating fourth round tie of the Carabao Cup to get into the quarterfinals. This was a game defined by the managerial brilliance of Pep Guardiola and Jurgen Klopp, as both teams looked great even without key players still returning from the World Cup. It was also defined by the individual brilliance of one Kevin De Bruyne. Now, everyone knows that he's a great midfielder, but as we get through this analysis, you'll see exactly why he is one of the best midfielders in the history of the Premier League, maybe even the history of the game. Let's get straight into it. We start with City in possession and how they built from the back to get through the Liverpool press. Even though Liverpool started in a 4-3-3, they were happy to play a 4-2-4 or 4-4-2 in the press with Salah and Nunes as two strikers, Elliot and Carvalho on the wing, and uh, Thiago and Bajcetic playing in center midfield. And obviously, Carvalho and Elliot would drop a lot deeper along with the two strikers whenever uh, as City were progressing the ball up. Now let's look at the tactical brilliance of Pep Guardiola and how he positions his players in areas of the pitch that makes makes the whole pitch wider and helps City exploit space and always have that extra man to pass the ball to. We start with Erling Haaland, who occupies one of these two center backs in this area. Kevin De Bruyne as a false nine center forward right in behind him, uh, free to occupy in any of these areas. Riyad Mahrez holding high and wide on the right-hand side, which forces Robertson back and immediately creates this pocket of space in between. Then we have Rico Lewis actually stepping into midfield, and he was consistently doing this through the entire game for Kevin De Bruyne to occupy the space that he left. Then we have Manuel Akanji actually playing really wide as a right back and Stefan Ortega stepping in as the center back, right? So they were actually playing without a goalkeeper in net. And he does this with Ederson a lot too. The idea is that with these many players in the outfield, you actually have a 4-3-4 on the pitch so that as Nunes and Salah press up against Laporte and Ortega, and Elliot presses up against Ake, Carvalho tries to press up against Akanji, all of a sudden you have a mismatch in midfield with Gundogan, Rodri, and Lewis having a lot more space to exploit. So Lewis can step into this area to make more room for uh, Ortega to play a ball over the top. Rodri can control this area, get a straight ball from Ortega into this space. If Bajcetic pushes up against Rodri, Ortega can find Gundogan who can run into this space and progress the ball forward. Either uh, the Liverpool players have to press into this space and make it difficult for City to play out, or they have to sit deep being worried about that ball in behind to either Palmer, to Erling Holland, to Kevin De Bruyne. City can do a lot with that, right? It made it really difficult for Liverpool to even press City in the first place because if, if these players go up to uh, the back four of City in this formation, all of a sudden, there's space all over the pitch for City to exploit. And obviously, Ortega and the other three defenders that are playing in the back have the passing ability to find the players in the in the final third. We start with analyzing the first goal for Manchester City, which shows us the brilliance of Kevin De Bruyne, Ilkay Gundogan, and Erling Haaland. We start with Kevin De Bruyne with the ball in this area of the pitch. He passes it to Cole Palmer, which draws out Milner and Bajcetic towards him and provides space for Kevin De Bruyne to run in behind. Once he gets into this area, he receives the ball back from Palmer, and here we pause to look at the brilliance of Ilkay Gundogan. Gundogan makes a bending run into the box, which pulls Matip from this area here more towards him so that he blocks off the near post cross or something like that that's potentially played by De Bruyne. Now, Haaland and Gomez are running back towards, uh, Gomez running back towards his own goal, Haaland running back with him. Uh, Holland occupies this position so that Gomez has to keep looking at the ball and he can't see Holland. And as soon as De Bruyne is about to play the ball, Holland cuts his run so that he runs into the space left by Matip. And once De Bruyne plays the ball in, Holland is there to put it uh, in the near post past Kelleher, right? So this goal is really created by obviously De Bruyne getting that space on the left wing, but more importantly, Gundogan pulling Matip out of position. And that is the brilliance of this guy because he has the license to go into midfield to pick up the ball and also the license to get uh, forward uh, into the box to score goals, right? And he's a very, very important player for Pep Guardiola and kind of goes underrated because of how much Kevin De Bruyne shines. So this was a great goal by Man City in the 10th minute of the game. Now we go back to City in possession with Liverpool holding a loose 4-4-2 shape with Elliot and Carvalho playing as right and left midfielders instead of right and left wingers as they were earlier. 
Rico Lewis was easily the third most impressive player in the City team after De Bruyne and Gundogan because he was stepping into midfield as a natural fullback, right? It was very impressive to see from him uh, with De Bruyne holding these high spaces as a second striker and Gundogan having the license to get into the box as we talked about. Lewis was really important in this double pivot spot next to Rodri. He had 89 touches on the ball, two passes into the final third, but even more impressively, four tackles and interceptions combined, one clearance and eight ball recovery. So he was in the right place at the right time when it was needed. He also won three fouls for this team. So uh, Liverpool won the ball back or tried to press him. He was very clever in getting the ball out of his feet and winning those tactical fouls. He was also not afraid to commit fouls. I think he committed three fouls in this game. And he also won five ground duels. He seems to be learning his defensive senses from the best, right? From the likes of Rodri, from the likes of Fernandinho, probably up to last season. So very impressive performance from him and very impressive how Man City's academy keeps churning out these great players. So excited to see how this guy can fit into the City team moving forward. We wrap up how City played in this game by looking at the man of the match, Kevin De Bruyne. What an absolute beast. He got two assists in this game. One from the left-hand side where he put a cross in from with his left foot for the Holland goal. And the second from the left-hand side as well from this area where he put in a cross with his right foot for the Ake goal. He always manages to find space. I don't know how he does it. He plays the one-twos with, um, you know, uh, Gunduan Palmer on this side with Mares and Lewis or Rodri on this side and manages to find that two yards he needs to put in the cross. He had 72 touches, one successful dribble five chances created, five progressive passes, and 16 attempted crosses in this game. By far the highest uh, for either team, and an expected assist of 0.45. What an absolutely brilliant player. I mean, he will probably be done with his career over the next few years, and he will be remembered as one of the greatest midfielders of all time, one of the greatest Premier League players of all time. I have no doubt about it, and his brilliance really shone through. Pep Guardiola must be thanking his stars to have a player like this every night before he goes to sleep. Next, we look at Liverpool in position by analyzing the first goal because we see a moment of brilliance by Joel Matip. We have Matip in, with the ball in this area here, and as he progresses towards Mo Salah, it opens up space for Salah because he's trying to run in behind, and Cole Palmer, Gundogan, and Haaland get really tight to Matip, trying to close off that passing lane. And Matip, instead of playing it to Salah, decides to play it in this space, this little space that he has, straight to Milner. Milner receives the ball, and all of a sudden, he's in behind Ake at the edge of the box. And Laporte is slightly panicking, trying to get back to cover Milner so that he doesn't get a clean shot off on goal. Nunes decides to make this run towards a, uh, behind Akanji. Akanji doesn't know if he wants to zonally mark this space or go with Nunes, so he's occupying this area here. And that opens up the space for Carvalho. As soon as Milner goes deeper into the box, it's a simple cutback to Carvalho who rolls it past Ortega into the goal. It was an excellent goal created that came almost out of nowhere and showed just how dangerous Liverpool can be even though they haven't been at their best this season, even though they're missing some key players from attack because Diaz is injured, because Jota is injured. So Carvalho has to step into this team, but he, he does just fine when Matip and Milner create such an open space for him in the pitch. So great to see that from Liverpool. To close off the analysis, we're going to look at Liverpool in possession in the second half to see exactly why Jurgen Klopp's team, even with key players missing like Diaz and Jota, even uh, not being in the best form, can be a deadly, deadly opponent to play against. We have Rico Lewis losing the ball to Robertson in this area here. He plays the ball to Ox down the line uh, on the left-hand side. And immediately, Rodri, Akanji, De Bruyne, and Lewis all surround Ox uh, to pressure him off the ball. What Oxlade-Chamberlain does really well in this situation is turn and play an outside foot pass all the way down this channel and because he realizes that Nunes and Salah are uh, 2v2 against Laporte and Ake. Nunes beats Laporte for pace down this line, gets the ball in this area, and Laporte's over here. Ake runs back, stays with Salah, but Salah puts on the brakes right at the edge of the box, so Ake keeps running, makes this little space here, Nunes cuts the ball back to Salah, and Salah rolls it into the net. And this is a classic example of how an, uh, a great team with great players can still hurt you on the counterattack. And they were even decent in the in their pressing today, right? With uh, pressing in packs of three, with the likes of Oxley, Chamberlain, Thiago, and uh, Robertson on the right uh, on the left hand side, 
Elliot, Gomez, and Salah on the right-hand side, and and any any combination of three players that you can think of, depending on where the ball is. And that's the heavy metal football, that's the pressing from the front that uh, Klopp exploits so well. In this game, Darwin Nunez looked very good, but he still looks like he is quite a bit further back than Erling Haaland in his progression because he's obviously asked to do a lot more than Haaland is in the City team in in the sense that Nunez has to exploit the channels on the left-hand side and the right-hand side, whereas Haaland is kind of asked to stick to the box and just, you know, finish what is provided to him from players like De Bruyne and, and the wingers and so forth. So Nunez really has still a lot of composure to be developed. He still needs to develop that positional sense. And he got into a lot of great positions today, but he didn't make the most out of it. He was at this the edge of the box, and he had almost three shots that he could have scored three goals with, which shows you that even in a game that City dominated, they could have easily lost this game, right? Because City probably uh, Liverpool probably had uh, four chances to score goals, and they only scored two of them. So I think lo- a long way to go for Nunes to improve, but he's showing promising signs. This was an excellent game to watch for the neutral, and I'm really excited to see what the Premier League brings back to us. I'm going to be analyzing a lot more games from this league and the other leagues, as I've already said. Um, So exciting to see this. Thank you guys for watching. Like and subscribe. Let me know which games you'll like to see next down in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.